Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 12th of September 2011. We've had quite an interesting outbreak of sunspots, which we'll get to in a minute. But first, our trivia question. 19 years ago today, the Space Shuttle Endeavour roared into orbit. It was the 50th shuttle mission. The first part of the trivia question is what was the STS number of the 50th shuttle mission? The second part is that there were three notable firsts associated with the makeup of the crew. What were they? The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday we've had seven more sea flares and there's been a steady increase in the X-ray background over the last 48 hours. So what's going on with the active regions to cause this? Well let's take a look at the sunspot regions and find out. First of all we have five officially numbered regions on the disk. We lost region 1283 over the limb last night but a new region has been numbered region 1292. But there's the astounding number of seven new unnumbered regions on the disk at the moment. So there's been a true outbreak of activity, albeit mainly in terms of sunspots rather than in flares. Let's start with region 1287. No claim that the area of this region has dropped by 15% overnight. However, if you compare yesterday's image with today's, it doesn't look to be a lot of difference in the main spot, but there seems to be a new trailer spot associated with the region. So I would have said that this region has grown rather than shrunk. Next we'll move on to region 1289, which NOAA says has shrunk by about 5% in the last 24 hours. And if you look at the pictures, you can see why. Those spots that were in the trailer region that we were seeing growing yesterday have all but disappeared. However, two new regions have appeared to the south and west of the main spot. Next we'll turn to region 1290, and NOAA claims that this has increased in area by 40%. And if you compare images with yesterday, I think you'll agree. You can see that the spots, while very similar in number, are much larger than they were yesterday. Region 1291 seems to be stable in area, but when you look at it, it is a very small spot and doesn't seem to have changed very much. Region 1292 is a modest sized region, one of two new regions that I pointed out yesterday near the east limb. The region out ahead of it, as you can see, has completely disappeared. However, it's too close to the limb to tell really whether this is growing or stable or decaying region, and so we should keep an eye on it until we know. Now let's take a look at the seven newly emerged regions. However, while I've been putting this together, I noticed there was a new region just popping up behind region 1290, so there's really now eight unnumbered regions on the disk. So I better get this report out quickly before there are yet more. They're all relatively small regions at the moment, except for the ones coming over the northeast limb, which could be quite substantial regions. However, with so many new regions emerging, there's a fair chance that at least one of them is going to grow into a major region. So we should keep an eye on all of these, in case they do. Overall, solar activity has been low to moderate. Yet I find it interesting that so many sunspots emerge over such a broad range of longitudes, all at the same time. It implies some sort of global mechanism. I've decided to omit the SDO data until they can get their act together, the AIA movies have been getting shorter and shorter until they've got to the point of being absolutely useless. And I've told them this. Hopefully that will change in the next day or two. So we'll move straight on to the high temperature X-ray image from the GOES SXI instrument. Uh, and here I'd like you to concentrate on that bow-shaped coronal hole in the Western Hemisphere, which is now beginning to affect us, as you will see when we look at the solar wind. The data from the Lasko coronagraph on SOHO show us that we're still getting a good parade of coronal mass ejections. I can see at least four in this sequence, both from the high resolution C2 field of view, as well as from the larger field of view C3 instrument. Note Venus exiting stage left. We go to the A status to look at the status of the solar wind. We can see that the temperature has been relatively constant, just above 100,000 degrees and the velocity has been varying between 580 and 640 kilometers per second which is very high and is probably associated with that coronal hole. The density however has been changing by about an order of magnitude between 0.1 and 1 protons per cubic centimeter. The high energy electron flux has been returning to more normal levels but is still showing signs of quite significant variability and the proton events from the X-flares seem now to be over. NOAA 15 a satellite enables us to construct pictures of the auroral zone and we can see at the moment it's quite agitated and the KP index has been varying between 1 and 4, 4 being unsettled. 
So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B6 level, sunspot number has risen to 94, radio sun intensity is at 120 solar flux units, solar wind speed is still above 600 km per second with a density of about 1 proton per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are rated as unsettled. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that sea flares are likely, M flares are just still possible, but I think it's unlikely that we're going to get an X flare. Sunspot number should remain high, if not go higher. Coronal mass ejections are likely. The solar wind speed should remain high, at least for another day. But a geomagnetic storm, I think, is now becoming more unlikely. From the composite coronal image, we can see that just about all of that region in the northeast is now over the limb. So our answer to the trivia questions are, one, that the number of the 50th shuttle mission was STS-47. Go figure that one if you can. The second part of the trivia quiz was to name the three notable firsts associated with the makeup of the crew. The first of that was Mamoru Mori, who was the first Japanese astronaut, though not the first Japanese to fly in space. Mae Jameson was the first African American woman in space. And Mark Lee and Jan Davis were the first married couple in space. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.